Welcome back. I do apologize to Felix right Ace Attorney. Uh, part four of the, the finale. Uh, welcome back. Uh, hey, we're doing the Valen's testimony now! I don't have visited the hospital room at the time, and I give you the question. Which, according to the letter, was 11.20 p.m. Indeed. In magic, timing is everything. Right. Consider the illusion of teleportation. If I were to appear on stage before my stunt double has left, how would that look? Why, it would reveal the very sequence of my magic! Now that you've revealed the very sequence of your magic for all of us, let's move on. You were dead at the designated time, and what did you see? The smell of gunpowder hung in the room, and my mentor had taken his final bow. So, you weren't worried for your own safety at all? I mean, you smelled gunpowder, yes. What if the shooter was still nearby? I... I did not consider this, to be honest. It is forbidden for a magician to have good imagination. Uh, really? Isn't magic all about illusions and imagination? How about this? You were the shooter, which is why you weren't afraid. <laughs> now you are the one imagining. It is forbidden for a lawyer to have a good imagination. The witness will refrain from pausing so suspiciously before responding. My forbidden imagination is starting to imagine things. I did not imagine my fellow student might have received the insane instructions. Which brings us back to this reason neither of you could refuse. So it is. And my partner, he did not refuse. Magnifi wrote the same thing to you. Why could you refuse if Zack couldn't? Because I have a will of steel! Of course. I also do this trick where I bend steel bars. So perhaps steel isn't all that strong. So which is it? Mind if I continue? Yet the deal with the dead is still a deal. Death's sweet kiss I gave to the clown. There were two bullet holes at the scene. One in the victim, and one in the clown. You're saying the one who shot the clown was you. No doubt my partner Zack has said, said much the same thing. Yeah, because whoever didn't shoot the clown committed murder. I better dig around here a bit more and see what I turn up. See what turns up. Mr. Vallant, let me ask you about something else concerning the crime scene, namely... The number of pistols. How many pistols were there when you entered the room? By which you mean what, precisely? Two pistols were used in the Zack and Block quick draw shoot em, correct? One for each of you. You are well informed. Cut. Only one of my old friends sat in the hospital room that night. What did Zack tell me back in the lobby? Of course, I had no intention of shooting my mentor. I stuck into his room that night at the appointed time, and found there upon his bedside table two pistols. I took the pistol I had fired and placed it in my pocket. Hmm, I see no problem with that statement. Only one pistol is visible in the photograph of the crime scene after all. So you picked up that pistol and fired it. Indeed I did. Alakazam. Alakazin. Alakaboom. Hmm. Is the number of pistols really so important? Quite important. The number, I mean, <clears throat> the number of pistols is quite important, your honor. Very well. Please add this to detail in your testimony. What can I do but obey? Only one pistol was in the hospital room that night. With it, I shot the clown. I shot the sheriff! So you took the only pistol there and you fired it. That's correct. And that pistol was this one, which was left of the crime scene? Good show! I see you too are a magician of sorts. And you're an idiot of sorts. Do you have any idea what you just said? I see the fire in your eyes as you glare at the witness. What about he need up this trial a bit? He's so slow, these slow ballads bore me. Hmm. I've got a hunch, but maybe that's all it is. Maybe I should ask about something No! Else. On second thought, let's run with this testimony for a while longer. Okay, so what, what's the problem? Well, if there's only one pistol, then how were two bullets shot? No. <laughs> Remember what Zach told us. He said there was... Bullets. There were two pistols, each with one bullet. Right, and he's saying that there's only one pistol. 
and then he mm -hmm. shot it. Oh, yes, because there should be one pistol, because... Oh, because Zack was already there. Yeah, Zack, what did Zack say he did? Took it with him? Yeah, he said that. He said he mm, shot the right. he shot the clown. That's right, right, right. And then and he that. took it with right. him. Okay. okay. Yes. So yes. Following that logic, yeah. Valen goes in, sees the pistol. What happens? Well, he's like, where's the second one? No. He takes it and he's like, he should have already seen him dead. No. What no, no. V Zach said he shot the clown. And but Valant's saying he shot the clown. But Zack showed up before Valant. Exactly. So, they so both if, if, if Valant had been there, and Valant's saying that he's the one who shot the clown, he would have shown up and found him dead. Uh, fires one real bullet. Barrel marks match bullet found in victim. And this is the bullet that we found in, in uh, his head. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. But then so, there's a second bullet found in the clown, which yes. we haven't been w able to get. Which is belongs to the other gun. Belongs to the other gun. Okay. The one that he didn't grab. So what actual possibility is there? Because we have proven... We have proven that this one... That the bullet that's in the guy's head yeah. belongs to this gun. This gun. Okay. And who shot this gun? Who did shoot that gun? We don't know because there's no fingerprints. Wait, so wait, no, no, it was Zach. It was Zach. No, it wasn't because he took, Zach it took the gun. So, so the one that he shot went into his head. There we go. <laughs> he what took to the defendant, my God. Zach Cramery, when he entered the room. He entered the room. There's two guns there. He took one of the gun, shot the clown, left with it. And then Valen came in. There's one gun there. And that one gun happens to be the same one that has the bullet that goes in the guy's head. So, what did he do? Obviously. He shot him. He shot him. There you go. Yeah. Yes. This is my problem with, with this game. Is I'm like. I'm like, oh yeah, we know this. But then I don't realize, like, I'm like, oh, well, since we already know this. Don't they already know this? No, they don't know this. We are going one step at a time. They did not mention this once. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. We need to talk about this in the courtroom before. Okay. Now we are. We got to follow the path. Yes. There were two pistols on that table. Two? One of those pistols he used to shoot the clown in the forehead. Then he left with it in his pocket. Of course, this is what he would say. Unlike the hapless clown, we must assume our defendant has some brains in his head. Well, what about what Mr. Villan has told us? You see, there's something about this testimony that doesn't make sense. What might that be? I told you. I took the pistol that was there and shot the clown. That's your story, at least. But the rifling marks tell a different story, Mr. Vallon. Recall what Prosecutor Gavin told us. He compared the bullet taken from the victim's skull with the fire, a bullet fired from this gun. The rifling marks on the bullets were a perfect match. Ugh. Mr. Vallon, if you fired this pistol, then you shot the victim in the forehead. Well, this is all rather sudden. <laughs> what have I done? Prosecutor Gavin? I owe the court an apology. Sorry. Sorry for what? You see, I was unaware that two of these unique pistols were crafted. The analysis of the rifling marks only proved the type of gun that fired them. But, but that's not what you told us before. You said you'd verified the murder weapon. Which is why I'm apologizing to you right now! <laughs> Quite sincerely, I might add. Would you hold me accountable for a mistake I made in my youth? That was just this morning. I am still young. And uh, I might add, <laughs> it wasn't really my fault. If the defendant had only admitted he took one pistol from the scene of the crime, <laughs> we would not be having this pleasant discussion now. Hmm. Valent Grammary. Yes, Your Honor. You were presented to this court as a decisive witness. 
but you've proven to be more divisive than decisive. Ooh. It's been bars. <clears throat> You'll see. In time. The testimony so far has merely been a review of the facts. The proof comes next. Care to elaborate, Prosecutor Gavin? When Mr. Valent entered the hospital room, the victim had already been shot. As his next testimony will prove! Alright! The real fight is about to begin! Bring it. Very well. The witness will now testify to the court. Help us determine who shot what. Who shot what? I arrived at the hospital room at the appointed time, which is to say 11.20pm. After discovering the body, I fulfilled my obligation. Then called in the doctor. The doctor examined the body before the police arrived. He was quite clear about the time of death, 11.10 p.m. And the one in the room at the time was my partner, not me. Hmm. Those times are rather close, I have to admit. We're talking about an alibi established over a matter of minutes. You was a ten minute discrepancy as the basis of your alibi. It's easy to explain in this situation, Herr Judge. For example, take our debut hit single, 13 Years Hard Time for Love. Due to the, due to the song, press the play button, and it will play for 2 minutes 15 seconds. Do it a hundred times, the result is the same. The debut single was only 2 minutes and 15 seconds long? What a fucking ripoff. <laughs> Magic is the world of utmost pre precision. Hocus Pocus requires admirable focus. And in the time of death determined by the doctor, there is an incontrovertible truth. Very well. The prosecution warns us that we are dealing with rather precise times. And we can expect the cross-examination to require the same level of precision. It will hope the defense refrains from its customarily broad, sweeping accusations. As we blur the focus this case so clearly demands. Point taken. Basis remarks will result in a penalty. Carry on, Mr. Wright. Carry, Carry on. on. Right. I arrived in the hospital room at the appointed time, which is to say 11.20 p.m. 11.20 p.m. Can you prove that's when you arrived? Alas, such a feat may be beyond even the great valent. For there was no one in that room but Magnifi, and he was departed after a fashion. I have here defended to that exact memory sworn deposition. <coughs> I snuck into his room that night at the appointed time. It was ten minutes before I left the room, and the victim was still alive. The time indicated by this letter to Zack was 11.05 p.m. Exactly, which means the witness could not have entered that room before 11.15, because his partner was still in the middle of his crime. I see someone did the arithmetic homework. You see, the defendant himself has corroborated the witness's testimony. Hmm. Does all that make sense? There's probably a contradiction. Uh, not a problem. You, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, you're going to take damage. I don't see any problem with that testimony. If you say so. Let's continue, shall we? Sometimes the most magical thing of all is the truth. I genuinely thought he was going to say, the most magical thing of all is magic. <laughs> After discovering the body, I fulfilled my obligation, then called in the doctor. You walk in on a murder, and the first thing you do is shoot the clown? The disciple does what the disciple must. My mentor's request, without reason, had caused for me to a surfe. Surfe? Surfeet. Surfeet, I think. Surfeet, right. I saw. But what would I, Valent, be now without him? May the soul of the Magnificent Grace find a greater peace above. This I muttered to myself as I pulled that lonely trigger. In any case, I believe this is nothing more than what we have already learned. I'm still waiting for one of those wrecked moments, Air Attorney. May I remind you that baseless remarks will earn penalties? Proceed with that in mind. Yes, Your Honor. What a pain this is turning out to be. The doctor examined the body before the police arrived. Did the doctor say anything concerning the cause of death? Oh yes. I believe he screamed, My God! He's been shot in the head! It doesn't take a doctor to notice that. I probably would have screamed the same thing. 
and I would have uh, been the requiem that the those in my soul at that old site. Whatever happened to good old fashioned investigation? In any case, I believe this is nothing more than what we have already learned. I'm still waiting for one of those right moments, Ed and Tony. Yeah, I'll remind you that the base will proceed without in mind. Yes, Your Honor. I mean, yes, Your Honor. What a pain this had to be. It was quite clear about the time of death. 11.10 p.m. I don't think I'm stepping out on a limb to say I have some doubts about this. How could the doctor be so precise with the time? We do usually only get an estimated time of death. True. I'm not sure I've heard of a verified time of death. Magic revels in the making of complex appears simple. But reality is the opposite. What appears complex in this case is a simple matter of subtraction. I see another person has done their arithmetic homework. The point here is the IV the victim was taking. It's quite visible in the photograph of the scene. Recall what we had heard earlier about the victim, Magnifique Grand Reschedule. Every night at 11, Magnifique took an IV drip for 30 minutes. I can see the IV bag right there, yes. Now look a little closer. All of the tubes down from the bag to the end. Ah! The needle's been removed. Doubtlessly, it fell out when he was shot. That would seem to be the case. When the needle comes out, the IV no longer drips. Ah, you could just measure the remaining IV liquid. Precisely. The IV liquid functions, for our purposes, as an hourglass of sorts. This is how the doctor determined the time of death. From the amount remaining in the bag, it was determined that the IV had stopped 10 minutes after administration began. IV report. Approximately, Approximately 10, 10 minutes have passed, passed since, since the, the IV, 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 IV began. IV began. And so it was when I felt into that room. Ten minutes had passed since that horrible crime was committed. And this is proof. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright? Hmm. Did that seem important? Very important. Well, seeing how this is the biggest clue we have to the time of death, I'd say it's very important. Hmm. Agreed. It would be hard to imagine a more precise way to determine this time. Behold the power of arithmetic! Very well. The witness will add this detail to his testimony. Sometimes the most magical thing of all is magic. The truth. The water of life springs not eternal. The remaining IV liquid proves my innocence. Did you notice the IV yourself by any chance? When I first entered that room, a stench of gunpowder assailed me. Next! A mark of death upon my mentor's forehead. And then, his left arm did I spy, a rose, drooping and wilted. It thorn with a scarlet ivy needle. Not from the vein by the force of the shot, luckily for you. But that ivy had not been there, I... you might be a suspect. Indubitably so. I might say it's thanks to my lucky color. Your lucky color? Indeed! Even today, I wear it proudly upon my suspect self. For it always, without fail, brings me luck. Why, when Zack and Valent won their first Magician's Grand Prix? Yes, the very one held by the Association of Internal Magician, International Magicians, I was adorned in this entire event too. And now trophy, a bust. Ah, oh, what a day that was. Ugh, this is one trip down memory lane no one needs. My lucky color, yes indeed! And that IV too. I say, I think twas huge, especially for me, Valent! Hmm, that does seem to be the case indeed. Well, Mr. Wright, any thoughts on this testimony? Valent sure looks happy with himself. Okay, how about this lucky color testimony? Well, lucky color I'm assuming is yellow. Yeah. He's saying the IV was yellow? Yeah. It's not yellow. <gasps> Certainly sound like your lucky colors brought you plenty of luck. But not this time. Mr. Volant, your lucky colors betrayed you. I'm afraid you've lost me. Your Honor, the witness's testimony just now clearly contradicts the evidence. What? 
Please recall my warning at the beginning of this cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Baseless accusations will be duly penalized. I do hope this latest accusation is well-based. Don't worry. I've got all your bases right here. Very well. Let's hear the defense's claim. Where is your evidence that contradicts what Mr. Volant has told us? The crime scene tells all, Your Honor. The photo of the crime scene, oh. Oh, the stuck color has me yearning for black and white. They have got simplicity. Tell us, El Wright, just where is the contradiction in this photo? My pleasure. And I assure you, it's quite simple. But I can't promise anything in black and white. Let's hear what Mr. Wright has to say. What in this photo contradicts the witness's testimony? Fucking IV, it's green! <laughs> well, Aunt Grammar ye. Let's get one thing straight about your lucky color. It's yellow, yes? <laughs> kind of takes the mystery out of it, but yes. Something wrong with yellow, Mr. Wright? Yes, there is. Decisively wrong, in fact. Take another look at the photo of the crime scene. What's this? Confusion, Dot. Tell us, what do your elderly eyes spy? Even my elderly eyes can see a problem here, Mr. Volant. Look at that IV bag! <laughs> what is this? What foul magic? <clears throat> It'll be hard to call the IV liquid yellow, and I'm afraid no magic was involved in the taking of this photograph. <laughs> I like it's... I like it's... No! <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. What, the, what does this mean? What the fuck does this mean? This... This is just some kind of mistake! Yes! Awesome. Fuck! Prosecutor ah. Gavin! No witness's mistake. <laughs> the greener they are, the harder they fall. I suppose there's no substitute for experience. Valid grammar ye, as you reminded us several times. Your lucky color is yellow, but the IV is clearly not. Well... This contradiction can mean only one thing. And to think, you almost had me. I see your true colors now. Ace Attorney Phoenix Wright. Oh, shit. Is that the first time he's ever been called an ace attorney? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. That just gave me chills. Oh, yeah. That's like when, like a, a movie or a TV, like when a TV show doesn't say the name of its show until like the final episodes. Ex yeah. Usually they make it the first episode. No, no, no. You gotta yeah. Make it the final episode. Oh, that, that, get, that goes crazy, dude. Mm -hmm. Something you'd like to tell us, Prosecutor Gavin? As far as this court can tell, the witness's testimony does contradict the evidence. <laughs> yes, a contradiction. One that I shall be pleased to hand right back to Mr. Wright. How do you mean? How? Because the witness has made no mistakes. I agree, at a glance, Ivy liquid does appear a sort of greenish yellow. But I assure you, the liquid itself is quite yellow. Yellow liquid? How can you say that? Well, as I can tell from this photo, it's green. Yes, but what color is the IV bag itself? The bag? You mean the plastic bag on the hook? Hmm, it looks like a, I want to say light blue? Precisely. Figured it out yet. Put the yellow liquid in the blue bag and... Motherfucker, you get green. <gasps> this, incidentally, is the liquid's true color. I see. The explanation does have a ring of truth to it. Objection! As I thought. There's no substitute for experience, Prosecutor Gavin. What? You may tell a good tale, but you've just proven something rather grave. For you, that is. G grave? The liquid in the IV is yellow, yes. But how did this witness know that? 
quite unnatural when you think about it. You did think about that, didn't you? Uh, yeah. Your Honor, the defense requests an explanation from the witness. At the scene of the crime, the IV liquid appears to be green. So let me ask, how did the witness know the IV liquid was actually yellow? Alakazoo! Alakazoo! Oh, Alakazoo! OMG! <laughs> order! 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 Mr. Wright, you will explain this at once! Your witness clearly knew the color of the IV liquid, so I'm sure it means something, but what? I can think of only one possibility, Your Honor. The witness of Alant Grammar Yee has testified that the IV liquid is yellow because... Because he... He... Okay, hold on, I gotta be really careful here. He testified the IV liquid is yellow because... He knew the IV liquid... He'd seen it, it looked yellow. Okay, well, he would know because if, if it looked... It didn't look yellow, we know that. No. He'd seen it before, he knew the IV liquid's color. He... Would he know the IV... Even... Okay. But he... He made it seem like he... Like, got there and realized, like... Oh! And my lucky color's there. Uh... No. Because it didn't look... Yellow. So, like, the only explanation is that... He'd seen it before. Or that he knew it. It, either of those could be. This is like, uh, he's seen it, he, like, knew that that specific, like, the IV, like, the liquid is yellow. He'd do that. Or, or that, I, shit. That's what that means. Like, he, he looked in it, and he saw it was yellow. That's what that means. Okay? I mean, can I give, like, an actual reasoning that isn't even here? What? Well, the, the, the tube that was running to his arm? Yeah. It would have yellow liquid in it. It's a clear tube. Well, I, no, because it, it's out of his so socket. It's out of his arm, so it won't come out. It was. It will be in the back. IVs do like yeah. this. They like like a like, yes, like a tube. Like you know, it would still be coming out though. No, it would just not be going into him. No, because it, it, they use the the blood vessels, the heart pumping. That's what pulls it out. That's what pulls it out. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so then, what's really the difference between he'd seen it before and he knew the IV liquid's color? Is the he knew the IV liquid's color suggesting that he has some sort of medical knowledge that he knows what color that would be? No, it's that he found out on that day. That I would say that this is like medical knowledge, but he does not have that. So we'll go. To, we'll, okay. we'll do this one. Okay. From the facts before us, the answer is clear. The witnesses knew that the IV liquid was yellow. Why? Because he'd seen it before. But not inside the blue bag. We see in the photo, he saw the liquid by itself in a clear, colorless bag. I suppose he would have had to, but I'm still not clear as to what all this means. Ask yourself, why would he know if he didn't work at a hospital? That's where you'll find your meaning, your honor. Objection! <laughs> they find nothing. So what if he knew the IV liquid's color? He's been getting excited over absolutely nothing to our teeny hopper friends, teeny bopper fans, are y'all? The IV liquid is the only evidence proving the time of death. A 30 minute hourglass with 20 minutes worth of sand remaining. Your claim, Prosecutor Gavin. I remember it well. However, there's a critical difference between an hourglass and an IV bag. Well, wait, I, I know, an hourglass uses sand, but an IV bag uses liquid. I'm right, right? Am I right? I, I am frank, but I'm also right? As much as it pains me to say this, Your Honor, no. Unlike the sands through an hourglass, IV liquid enters the patient's body. At which point, like magic, it disappears. However, what if the amount of IV liquid had increased? You couldn't tell, could you? After all, there's no way of knowing how much went in. Let me get this straight, Elite. You're saying that this witness watered down the victim's IV bag? Not with water, but with IV liquid. That's how you knew the IV liquid was yellow. Wait, wait, I said wait! 
How might an amateur such as myself as a say to perform such a task? Objection! I'm an amateur too, but I can pour water into a cup. Objection! I'm afraid there's quite a big difference between a cup and an IV bag. Quite. Can you prove our witness is capable of such a feat? Hmm. He has a point, amateurs. I at least would have some difficulty pouring IV liquid into that bag. You don't need to be an expert to see the look on the witness's face. He added liquid to that IV to throw off the time of death. I tell you these fairy tales lacking evidence. Well, Mr. Wright, any solid evidence to bring us back down to Earth? Well, Aunt Grammarie, I'm afraid your magic won't serve you well in a life of crime. Might I ask what you're strongly suggesting? Magic relies on props. The props become evidence. Our witness was certainly able to increase the amount of IV liquid in the bag. All he had to do was work a little magic. And the prop was the, the syringe! The syringe! What did you say? Because we're ending the episode! <laughs> well, I guess we're going to present the syringe in... The next episode! We will this episode of Apologies to the Tony. Make sure you like, subscribe, and follow me on the Which is every single night. Bye-bye. Bye. I can't save the game. Why not? It's on this thing. It's on the screen. I have to present the, the needle. The syringe! The syringe! Take that. The victim syringe. Whoa! Okay, goodbye. Just keep that in. Oh, <laughs> yeah.